Welcome to the VCAT Material Certification School for Slurry Surfacing. In this module, I'll be covering mixed designs for slurry and microsurfacing. At the end of this module, you should be able to understand how important the mixed design is to the slurry and micro process. Slurry and micro definition. Laboratory design mixture of asphalt emulsion, finely graded aggregate, mineral filler, water, and occasionally an additive to help slow the breaking process and emulsion. Aggregate comprises 90 to 93 percent of the mix. Some things to look for, freshly crushed stone versus stockpiled, because the characteristics of the stone may change depending on when they crushed it last. The, uh, where they crush it in the quarry also affects it. Changes in the gradation from the mix design, uh, especially the percentage of the fines, can really make a major impact on the uh, finished slurry and micro product. There are three different types of slurry and micro. The first is a type A, very fine stone used. In the slurry system, the type A material is only one aggregate deep and that's what designates the depth of that material. In a microsurfacing system, you can stack the stone so you can go a little bit deeper with it. The fact that you have latex in the emulsion is what allows you to do that. Typical use for this material, residential streets, parking lots, runways and taxiways. Because the material is so fine, it, uh, it, it really allows it to get down into the cracks and, uh, and seal those up pretty well. Type B slurry and micro. This is the type of material that you see more of. Uh, it's generally used in residential streets as well. It fills in the surface voids better, takes care of the raveling issues better, uh, gives you a thicker wearing surface so you get a longer life out of it. Also can be used on two lane roads and uh, this gradation has also been used uh, on airports with great success. Type C, this is the coarsest material, um, mainly used on four lane highways, interstates, and high traffic two lane roads. This material, when used in a slurry system, um, again, can only go down one rock deep, but in a micro system, you can stack it, which makes it ideal for rut filling. You can only use a type C material to rut fill with. Not a B, not an A. When you're doing your mixed design, the materials must be representative of the material proposed for use on the project. If you're doing a type A, then it has to meet the type A gradation. If you're using a type B, the type B gradation and the type C. They should not only meet the specification, but they should also match the quarry's typical gradation. There's a range in there that you get to use, and so that's, uh, that's just a typical, you know, you, you may not have something that's going to be a 10 on the 200s. It might be a 6 or a 7. The most one of the most important characteristics of the aggregate is the particle shape. It should be non-polishing, and it should be uh, it says avoid, but it should have very little flat and elongated pieces of stone. It has to meet the sand equivalency test. Uh, greater than 40 for slurry, greater than 65 for micro. It also has to meet the LA abrasion test. There's a soundness test that it should meet. Also, there's some parameters on how moisture can affect the uh, unit weight. If you have an eight quart pan of material uh, struck off level, if that uh, moisture content is 2%, that eight quart pan is going to weigh less than if that uh, moisture level is 4%. And also the most important thing when you're doing your mix design is the stone has to be compatible with the emulsion, otherwise it won't mix. The emulsion that we keep referring to is a mixture of asphalt and water. It's a homogeneous mixture. So here, the example, you're seeing a salad dressing with oil and uh, vinegar. 
where it will layer. You can't have that with an asphalt emulsion. When you shake this, you'll get this, but uh, th that, uh, that won't stay that way. It'll eventually get back to here. Emulsions have to be much more stable than that, so once they're blended up, they stay together. Here's a brief example of how emulsions are made. Uh, you have a soap solution, goes into the colloid mill, an asphalt source, and once it runs through this mill, the finished product comes out and into your emulsion storage tank. This tank has to be insulated to keep the emulsion at a specified temperature. And once it goes through this mill, this asphalt, it's all uh, sheared down to a size of less than five microns, which is thinner than a human hair. Here's an example of a colloid mill of what it actually looks like in the plant. Um, here is the electric motor that drives the mill itself. The lines back here are bringing in the water and the asphalt and the finished product is going out to the tank farm right there. Once you make the emulsion, you store it in these tanks in your plant. Then it's sent out in insulated trailers to the job. Um, the, the testing that's performed uh, prior to doing this um, you, you want to make sure that your emulsion never freezes. The, uh, once it does, because it's asphalt and water together, if it were to freeze, then the water separates from the asphalt and all you have is a big chunk of asphalt left in your tanker. The emulsifier is the soap. It's the thing that you use to uh, uh, mix the asphalt and the water because those two things don't mix together easily. It imparts stability to the emulsion to keep it from separated, separating. Um, it imparts charge. A cationic emulsion has a positive charge. An anionic emulsion has a negative charge. It also imparts the mixing and curing characteristics of the emulsion. You have rapid set materials, which are surface treatment emulsions. You have quick set materials, which are slurry emulsions and microsurfacing emulsions. And you also have slow set materials. But very rarely are they used anymore. Here's some of the tests that the emulsion has to go through. Uh, really quick penetration measures the hardness of the emulsion. Residual asphalt content measures how much asphalt and water are in that emulsion. Uh, for slurry, that the, these two things are recovered by distillation with microsurfacing, it's oven evaporation. You also have the ring and ball softening point and uh, these are the different temperatures and the different uh, requirements that VDOT has for those products. Other materials used in emulsion, water. It has to be drinkable and free of salts because that will affect the chemistry of the emulsion. The additive that's referred to here, sometimes you have to use a little bit of additive on the machine to slow down the mix time. Um, most of the time that additive is actually some of the emulsifier that you have made the emulsion with. Um, there's also a dry additive you can use. Uh, aluminum sulfate is one and it's usually put in in the fines feeder but no one uses that typically. Mineral filler is another ingredient. <clears throat> it's typically a type 1 or 2 Portland cement or hydrated lime. Uh, it's it, it, the thing that determines which one you use is the characteristics of the aggregate that you're using and the emulsion that you're using um, with it. Generally, no more than 3% by weight of the aggregate in the mix. Uh, there has to be at least a quarter of a percent in microsurfacing. It improves the consistency of the mixture and it helps adjust the break and the set times of the final product. <clears throat> Some of the testing that has to be done uh, this is the mix time test. Uh, it, it's, it's one of the tests that you do to ensure that uh, the stone that you're going to use and the emulsion that you're going to use uh, will mix together and allow you enough time to um, mix the material in the pug mill of the machine, pour it into the spreader box and spread it out across the um, length of that and also to do your handwork wherever you may have handwork. 
sometimes you might have to put more emulsifier in or less emulsifier in depending on your stone source. And uh, you, need, uh, you need all of that stuff to work together. Here's the mix time test and, and what you uh, should end up with it looking like. If it's too wet, you're going to have this little extra ring of water around there. If you've got good consistency at 90 seconds, it should look more like this. And, uh, and that's okay, but that's pretty quick. Not a lot of handwork time with that. The uh, 120 seconds is kind of what you're looking for. Clear water, and it's pretty much that way after about 10 minutes. The consistency test, this test is done to ensure that you don't have segregation. Again, how much water you put in there uh, will have something to do with this. And this actually gives this um, uh, process a numerical value. It doesn't work sometimes too well with the quick set and quick traffic systems because they are set designed to, to set so quick that it may not give you the flow you need. Um, and this kind of will tell you exactly how much water you need for your system. Right here, this is a pretty good example of what it should be like. And this is probably a quick set system that has broken and not, uh, not really set up very well. The cohesion test is another test that's done. Um, Basically, this will help you uh, decide what your initial set and cure times are going to be. It gives the uh, agency an idea of when traffic can be returned to the pavement under, you know, whatever curing conditions, whether it's the summertime and that's a great condition, or whether it's in the fall or the spring when it's going to be a little bit slower. This will tell you, uh, this, this particular test here will help you out with that. The cohesion test is another test uh, that's basically used on the mix in the testing part so that allows you to get your optimum numbers for uh, asphalt, water content, mineral filler, et cetera. Uh, the wet stripping test, this test is very important because it will indicate the tendency of the mixture to uh, strip the bitumen from the rock. Uh, you don't want uh, a typical slurry or micro system to uh, have an inordinate amount of this. It'll cause raveling in the system and it'll wear off the road too quick. The wet track abrasion test, uh, this is one of the tests that gives you an indication of how the material is actually uh, going to wear under wet conditions. Um, you know, you, you, this kind of is more important for in the winter time when it's snowing and the roads are going to be wet for a longer period of time. Uh, and it's, um, this will help give you the right amount of asphalt that you need to uh, put in the mix to get it to bind the system together in the proper manner. Here are some of the steps that you go through when you go through this. Uh, you make the mix, pour it in the mold lay it out, allow it to dry, then you uh, soak it uh, for uh, uh, one hour, I think it is, for the slurry systems. And uh, for the, under the ISSA guidelines, it's actually a six day soak for it. Lateral displacement test or uh, the loaded wheel test, this will tell you uh, how um, it's going to rut or not rut. Mainly this is a micro uh, test. And uh, this is again, uh, tells you what the maximum residual asphalt content should be without rutting. Again, this is a quick, uh, a quick view. Make the mold, lay it out, measure, put it under the loaded wheel. And this thing sits there and rolls back and forth on it and then you take a measurement to determine how much has been displaced. This particular test also, um, you have to have a maximum content, but you also need a minimum as well. And uh, this test helps you uh, do that without flushing the residual asphalt to the surface. Again, 
this is for the sand adhesion. Um, basically done with the same, uh, the same machine as the displacement. This particular test is, uh, helps determine the compatibility between the fine aggregate particles and the emulsion residue. If uh, your mixture fails this test, it indicates a problem with the adhesion of the binder to the fine particles, which again will cause premature wearing of the material. The Marshall stability and flow, this determines the strength of a specific mixture. Um, and this is how VDOT verifies the strength and flow of the microsurfacing at a specified voids content. Again, this is the Marshall stability and flow. Uh, you pour your mix, you make the pill, put it in your machine, and it's hit with a hammer X amount of times. Once you get all this together, goes into your table. This uh, gives you the absolute minimum percentage of an emulsion required for a, a slurry or micro. It's telling you right here. The lateral displacement test. Uh, this test helps give you the maximum content of emulsion uh, allowed in a typical mixed design. And you can see right here that for this one it's 14%. So your minimum from the wet track is 12. Your maximum from the lateral displacement is 14. So 13 is probably your magic number there. So the basic differences between slurry seal and microsurfacing um, that you have here, um, you can see that the uh, aggregate and emulsion have to be compatible. Um, the slurry test, um, the compatibility is done at 68 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Your mixing time in seconds, your setting time is your towel test. This is the Virginia test method, which is 60. The requirement is 180 seconds. And then uh, the towel test, it has to pass with clear water. The residual binder content, um, Wet track abrasion lost for the micro, that's for Virginia test method 14. 75 seconds maximum for your uh, mixing time. And the test that it has to meet is the Marshall test and the stability and the flow. The cores made at the residual binder contents corresponding to 4.7% voids for level and finish and 6.5% for rut filling. Here's what an actual mix design looks like. Um, this is a slurry seal mix design. It has the date the testing was done, what stone was used, what the application is going to be, what the emulsion is going to be, the mix design parameters, 7% residual to 9.5, what the mineral filler is, the gradation results from the stone, <clears throat> the wet track abrasion test results, and the slurry compatibility results. This can only come from an approved lab, but the contractor has to give this to VDOT. Here's a microsurfacing mix design. This is a little different. This is for Boxley Martinsville. This is a type B. The emulsion is a CQS1H latex modified for a microsurfacing system. Uh, the asphalt range, six and a half to eight and a half, a little different than the slurry systems. The aggregate report, you still have the gradation. You have the Marshall test that's been done here. You've got the Schultz Brewer compatibility test on here. And again, uh, this will give you the design residual this 8.1 number, that's the number that you're looking for for your residual asphalt content. Again, this goes, can only be done by an approved lab, but the contractor has to give this to VDOT. That's all I've got on this module today. Thank you very much.